You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to rollermartinunfiltered.com. You can make this possible. Folks, you might remember the story of Sean Reed, an African-American man in Indianapolis shot and killed by police. This is the video that took place. He was live streaming this encounter that took place in Indianapolis. Uh, folks, go ahead and run the video. This is his photo right here uh, of Sean Reed. Uh, he served in the uh, U.S. Air Force. Uh, and um, you, this happened just a couple of months ago. What happened was he was driving in, uh, he was driving in Indianapolis. Uh, and he was actually on Facebook, live streaming at the time. Uh, and there was an encounter. Then at one point, he jumps out of uh, the vehicle uh, and is running away. Then all of a sudden, he is shot and killed by police officers. His story uh, has not gotten lots of attention. Again, a lot, a lot of the attention has really been focused on uh, the Ahmaud Arbery case uh, as well as the Breonna Taylor case uh, and, of course, the George Floyd. But this is another example of an African-American uh, encounter with police. And so uh, we have seen this uh, uh, happening for quite some time. Uh, this is one of the things that's being talked about uh, as we speak, uh, as right now uh, the United States Senate, uh, they are actually having uh, a hearing on the actions of police. Uh, we, of course, last week the House introduced, of course, their bill uh, speaking to this issue. But right now, uh, the senators are actually having this hearing. Uh, one of the folks who is testifying uh, is Lee Merritt. Uh, other people, Lee Merritt, of course, is the attorney. There are a number of other people who are also uh, testifying before uh, the senators right now uh, on Capitol Hill. So what I want to be able to do in just a second, uh, let's do this here. Let's go live to the United States Senate right now on that hearing on police reform. Can transform struggling communities. Project Safe Neighborhoods is the cornerstone of DOJ's anti-violent crime strategy, and that can help us ensure equal justice under the law. In Dallas, we launched our first PSN program in April of 2018, targeting a neighborhood that for decades had been plagued by violent crime. Of course, one of the initiatives enforcement was to enforce and to root out the offenders that were plaguing this community violent gang members and drug traffickers. But importantly, we felt that we needed to build a relationship of trust with this community. So we deployed a consistent and compassionate team of local police de department officers and agents, federal agents, that earnestly wanted to form relationships with the people in the neighborhood. And we took steps to foster a community that felt empowered to approach those officers for help with the assurance that they would be met with respect. To accomplish this, we took several steps. We hosted more than 100 community meetings with neighborhood groups, apartment managers, faith leaders, business leaders, and school teachers to share our vision for the neighborhood and solicit their advice on how to achieve it. Then based on that feedback, our task force worked to shut down seedy convenience stores, game rooms, and other establishments that were spawning crime. And then we used the important grant money from PSN to implement crime prevention through environmental design, working with a nonprofit organization to redesign a central community square. This vibrant plaza now boasts a mini lending library, recreation tables, and child's craft area. And since completion of this revitalization project, the plaza hasn't seen a single act of violence. Our PSN has yielded real results and even as Dallas's citywide crime increased, the violent crime in the PSN area decreased. U.S. attorneys across the country are having similar success stories. And we launched two additional PSN efforts in my district, in Lubbock and in Amarillo, both of whom, both of those cities are having undeniably positive results. In PSN Amarillo, we reduced the violent crime there by 13%, and in Lubbock, we've had a 25% reduction in business robberies and a 26% reduction in aggravated assaults because of this community-based... All right, folks, we're going to dip back into that in just a second. Uh, but what I want to be able to do is I want to pull up this video here and show you uh, and exactly what took place. And again, uh, you know, we covered this story 
Uh, we covered this story, but it has not, like I say, gotten uh, a lot of the attention as some uh, of the other cases. Uh, and so uh, let me pull this up for a second right here, folks. Um, one second. Um, and so um, this is, the, this is um, right here uh, from uh, WISH TV. Go right to it. They ain't really follow me no more though. It's only one now. I'ma talk over it. Phone's live. All right, folks. So here's this is the video. The police are, the police are actually following uh, Sean Reed. He's actually live streaming it. You heard him say it's just it's just one car that's following me, following me. And so uh, this is the this is the video here. Now, folks, the total runtime, his camera was running the entire time. The total runtime that his camera was live was one hour and nine minutes. This video right now, we are approaching the 11 minute mark. You're about to see. Um, and so you, you see him, the reason it's important, you just saw him, he's got the pair of athletic shorts on, he has no shirt on, and so that's, that's, that's an important point here. And right here, uh, so you hear him saying, there's only one. And so he's showing the police car that's behind him. We're at about the 1120 mark of this video. Uh, in just a bit, he is going to uh, actually get out of his car and then take off running. And then you're going to exactly see what took place. Uh, I can't answer on this phone. So I'm purpose I'm purposely allowing this to run because as you see they're they're pursuing him and he's live streaming uh, and then what I'm Giving you a sense of exactly, exactly what was happening uh, at that particular time. Almost lost him, y'all. I almost got rid of his ass. Damn, never mind. I thought I had his ass. I thought I was doing good. Now keep in mind that the family of Sean Reed, they have filed a federal lawsuit against uh, Indianapolis and the Indianapolis Metropolitan Police Department. I'm not going to jail today. No, sir. You got to guess me, baby. I'm not going to jail today. I'm not going to jail today. This took place on May 6th. I happen to be on my fucking, um, what is this? What the, what the fuck is this? Is this Michigan? Come on. Now, Reed was shot and killed by police officer what street is this? DeJour I'm Mercer this to get on May 6th. Oh, oh, baby, what's this? Michigan and what? Michigan and what? Ace? I'm finna park this motherfucker at Ace on 62nd in Michigan. Somebody come get my stupid ass. Please come get me. Please come get me. Please go get me. I'm on 62nd in Michigan. I just parked this motherfucker. I'm gone. Please come get me. Shit. Police have to shoot him. Police have to 
Oh my God. Certainly disturbing video there. Now, the police laid out what they say took place, but there were other witnesses who described something different. Joining us right now uh, is Sean's father, uh, Jamie Reed, as well as uh, attorney Ben Crump. Uh, gentlemen, glad to have you on Roller Martin. Okay, uh, okay, Jamie Reed is there. Sorry, we don't have Ben Crump waiting to get him. Jamie Reed? Yes. All right, um, certainly uh, sorry to have you on the show under these circumstances. Um, police say police say it was justified, but you, but you as well as uh, the attorneys, you're finding out different information about what happened to your son, correct? Yes, sir. And what is that? What's that? And wh what's the what's the different information that y'all have uh, discovered regarding what took place uh, with your son? Well, they just released the uh, the officers that were involved in the uh, the murder, so. Now, and, uh, go ahead. Yeah, that was the new information so far. And um, now, witnesses also describe something different happening than what um, uh, they describe. Well, they said, you know, they alleged that he uh, that he shot at them, but everybody knows that's a lie. So, and so they and so they claim, and so again, they claim he shot at them, but on that video right there, um, you don't actually hear uh, anything along those lines. Also, uh, were these cops wearing body cameras? Oh uh, no, sir, no, sir. That was uh, one of the issues that I brought up. When I talked to the chief, and uh, they said they had some type of uh, furlough on the uh, on the uh, body cam, uh, as far as getting them and, and everything. So, I mean, that's all they gave. That's all the information they said they had no, as I, far as body. So basically, they've never they they really never had plans on even getting body cams throughout all the years from all the stuff that didn't happen. So. Now, after the shooting, after the shooting, um, the police said that they fired a taser at Dre, but there's no evidence of that. What's that? Of the police firing fire? a taser. So, according to the uh, police department, they issued a statement saying officers had attempted to deploy a taser on him and that Dre had fired at law enforcement. Right. That was, that was the lie they was pushing out. You know, and they still ain't gave up the coroner's report, so that, you know, that really is something that's real suspicious anyway, making it seem like, you know, even though you can hear the video, it's obvious that they tased him and then he failed. So, I mean, I don't understand how you can, you know, it's, it's stream live, everybody in the world seen it, so it doesn't make any sense. How can you, how can you not go by what, you know, go by the video. I mean, the video tells everything, like the taser hitting. You can hear the taser, obviously, and and then the the amount of shots they ring out. So, I mean. I want to bring in Ben Crump right now. Ben, uh, again, the police said that Dre fired at them, yet witnesses say that didn't happen. They even said there was no sign of a gun. Yeah, yeah there is absolutely no evidence, Roland, uh, that Dre did anything to cause or justify them to kill him in the manner that they killed him. In fact, the witnesses say, Roland, that the police came up to him after they had already tased him and knocked him to the ground, and that's when they started using the deadly gunfire, so much, in fact, that one of the officers, and it's ridiculous, and I'm so sorry to say this in front of Mr. Reed, especially on Dre's birthday. But when he looked at the manner in which they had shot him in his face uh, multiple times, they said, look like it's going to be a dead casket, homie. Wow. Um, you have been gathering information. You have been putting this together. Uh, as I, I asked, of course, uh, Mr. Reed, the cops were not wearing body cameras. And so, again, I mean, unfortunately, he's passed away, but... 
uh, the only video that we have is the video that Dre shot. Yeah. So we have to believe the police account of what took place. Yeah, and it's so important. And thank God they had those witnesses there who were also using their social media devices. And even though they may not have gotten the direct shots that uh, shot Dre, they did get before and after and correct, uh, contemporaneous uh, thoughts as they were saying, oh, my God, they're going to shoot him. They're shooting him. And when you hear the person who's narrating this tragedy, you're saying she's given a firsthand account, blow by blow, of the murder of a young man that was completely unnecessary. They had him down on the ground. He never pointed a weapon at him. He never brandished a weapon. But yet, they still shot and killed him. And, and remember this, Roland. This is after Breonna Taylor and Ahmaud Aubrey. Everybody's already talking about they continue to kill us, these open season killings. And this is before George Floyd and now Richard Brooks. And so we have to let everybody know that in Indianapolis, Indiana, there's also a problem with these uh, just, I don't even know what you call it, Roland, unnecessary, unjustifiable, senseless, I call it legalized genocide because they kill our children and then they try to use the intellectual justification of discrimination to sweep it under the rug. But thank God for uh, Dre and his family Mr. Jamie Reed, they're not going to let them sweep it under the rug, nor am I and attorney Monique Presley. We're going to stay focused on getting attention to Dre Reed. We got to say his name, too. Um, autopsy. It hasn't been released? Has not been released a month and a half later. Uh, so they still don't... We The family still doesn't know to this day what bullets went into him, the entry wounds and exit wounds, what are the trajectory of the bullets? You know, we're calling on a Department of Justice investigation because I think, Roland, we've been doing this for almost, you know, decades now, and quite literally, what they want to do always is just try to kick the can down the road, hoping that people will forget about it, that there'll be other black people killed, so nobody will be thinking about how the cops executed Dre Reed. And so that's what I think is going on here. That's why this medical examiner, who I know has finished his autopsy, has not made them public. Um, Jamie, Jamie. Um, um, it, it has to be yeah. difficult. Yeah. This took place on May 6th. May this 6th. is June 16th. What would have been your son's 22nd son. birthday? What's that? I said, had to, certainly has to be difficult. Uh, this is June sixteenth, and of course, uh, you know, today's your, your son's twenty second birthday. Well, it's it's hard, you know, knowing he ain't here because uh, all right, folks. Let me know if, when we get his um, Skype back. I'm gonna go back to Ben Crump. Uh, ben, again. We, we, we see these stories over and over and over again. The police want us to believe their account. But if the police say on one hand, well, he fired a gun, but the witnesses say that was that their, their gun was uh, fired, here's the other piece. Was a gun recovered? They recovered a gun, but everything suggests that he never ever pointed a gun, never brandished a gun or anything like that. And so when they kill them, you, you have to take them at their word. They say they recovered a gun on the scene because they didn't have their body camera videos. And that underscores what uh, George Floyd brother and I were doing when we were testifying at the U.S. Congress rolling, and we got to march with you on Black Lives Matter Boulevard that evening afterwards. But what we said is if you don't have your police body camera video and somebody is brutalized or worse killed, you should be charged with a federal uh, violation of a new law that we're proposing of obstruction of justice. Because why do we have the body cameras if you're not going to turn them on when you have interaction with citizens? We're going to just assume that it is a rebuttable presumption that you did something wrong, and the burden is on you to prove that you didn't do anything wrong 
or you're going to be convicted of obstruction of justice. That would apply most definitely here with Dre Reed case and so many other cases, Roland, where the police said, well, we didn't have our body camera on. Uh, Jamie, you were speaking about uh, today being your son's birthday and how hard it is. Please go right ahead. Uh, guys, so let's do this here. Let's fix let's fix his audio because I want him to be able to uh, again. And so, all right, Jamie, try again because it, it was it, audio was muffled. Go ahead. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah, there we go. Okay. Yes, uh, it's hard, and uh, my family's back home right now uh, celebrating his birthday. You know, just you know, kind of keeping keeping my soul alive down there. You know, just letting everybody know I'm there in love and, and faith, and you know. Just, just hopefully, we need we need justice for Drake. That's, I mean, that's mainly what I'm trying to do. That's what we need to do. That's what Ben Crump and Monique is going to do for me. So, yeah, for our family, we just need we just need justice. You know, I, I need the the officers to pay pay for what they done. You know, so, but yeah, it's and, hard. And Ben, speaking to those officers, they are only on administrative leave. Yeah, and that's the tragedy of it. They're still being paid by the taxpayers after they kill uh, Jamie's son, and it makes no sense why they would say, unless we can prove that this young man put us in fear of our lives, there's no justification to kill him. And right now, Roland Martin, there is nothing that demonstrates, well, not one scintilla, of evidence that says uh, Dre, Sean, Reed ever put their lives in danger. And that's what we have to continue to keep telling everybody. We have to make his name be known far beyond Indianapolis. And I know, Roland Martin, using your platform, you can help get the word out that Dre Reed needs justice. That would be the fitting birthday gift for everybody who's listening to the show today to hashtag justice for Dre and make sure people know the story of Drayshawn Reed in Indianapolis, Indiana. Absolutely. Jamie Reed, Ben Crump. Gentlemen, we surely appreciate it. Thanks a lot. All right, thank, thank you. you. All right, folks, back to our Roland Martin Unfiltered video in just one moment. sister she is the designer the inventor the creator of these unbelievable great headphones uh 360 degree sound 4d headphones if you do gaming you can use these headphones you can actually talk there's bluetooth as well unbelievable and so they got a partnership with us folks and that is you have a promo code if you buy these headphones you get a discount go to seek.com and use the promo code right there you see it rmvip2020 RMVIP 2020. And so we certainly want to thank uh, Mary uh, Spiel and the folks at Seek.com.